Hey, so for the few who are wondering why the uh, original Ruby video was um, taken down and blocked, or you know the copyright strike and stuff, it it just says that the uh, there were video clips in there, so I guess I used it for too long. I personally think the I don't know it's. It's kind of dumb in my opinion because some people will post like whole videos about like the episode and have like longer clips or, or they'll just watch the whole episode, you know, and post it to YouTube. But I am, uh, I just recently changed it, you know, there's no clips anymore. Hopefully YouTube will let me do images and just screenshots of you know what I was trying to show but uh yeah let's just see where this goes here's the original video hey guys it's King uh, I'm gonna do something a little different which is uh you know reviewing an episode of Ruby that just came out or more like came out a couple days ago. I'm a little late on this. But the um, the review I'm going to do is more of based off of uh, what I liked, what I disliked, what they really could have done better. And uh, we'll just see where this goes. So what I really liked what they did with the episode was Mercury and Emerald's kind of goals or like a little insight on them so in the beginning mercury and emerald are kind of talking and emerald is wondering why mercury joined them mercury he just says it felt right you know he was born and raised to be this assassin but as time went on his father would always you know just beat the shit out of him you know for training and uh when he got a semblance it took it away so he just found the chance to kind of escape and stay with Cinder's faction. And if Salem wins, you know, he still wins. Uh, Emerald, however, thought, you know, Cinder was more family than anything. And they kind of have a little fight about what was going on. But, you know, I, I kind of like what they're doing with the with these two characters. Mercury, personally, is one of my favorite characters. I like I like him a lot, and uh, it's just good to know more about him. And I'm actually really interested to see what his semblance was. Um, there was a scene where they do uh, where Jean finds Pure's statue, and uh, there's there's a touching scene. You know, a lot of people I've seen like watch it like kind of cry it a little bit or something like that. I thought it was a touching scene. It wasn't something to be, you know, crying about. But it is a nice scene. I liked it a lot. And it, what really bothered me was how Jean found the statue. It so he's sitting there and you know, he's little little depressed, but he sees a single maple leaf and if, you know, just floats away, flies off and he's thinking, I'm going to follow that. That was strange. Like, who who thinks that? Like, I I always sit, you know, in benches and stuff because, you know, I like to walk around. I like to go take the bus. I like to be in places. And I see leaves float around all the time, but I don't follow them. Like, even if it was a single leaf, I wouldn't follow it. You know, I look at it. Had they, had they done a different thing where... You know, he's looking at this maple leaf and um, and it decides to, you know, float in the direction of the statue in like visible view. I would have been fine because if that happened, he would see the statue, see that it resembles Pyrrha a little bit and walk over to it. And that would have been like a better sort of transitioning for that. But him seeing the maple leaf and just walking and following it felt a little off um 
Ruby, at the very end, kind of bothered me about her statement where she, she says, like, she's been in worse situations and, you know, they didn't need help. Out, out of most of the situations, the many times you had an adult with you that helped you, saved you, all those times, it kind of overshadows, you know, the amount of things that they've done in the series. Like, Team Ruby has very few successful wins. Their team hasn't done much without an adult. Like, you could argue that the train sequence was, you know, their defining factor or, you know, they won that battle. Not really. They didn't really win that battle. Ruby, you're not kind of helping your situation there. And I understand why Crow wants them to give up and, you know, just stop this nonsense because, you know, the, the whole Ozpin thing hit him harder than anybody else because he's been so devoted to Ozpin. He's been helping him out through his whole life. And, you know, and to realize what you've been working for your whole life is just a lie, it, it really hurts. Like, that really hurts. Yeah, but they, they could have done a lot of things better. Like, for example, I thought this was a cute scene where everyone was super excited about how, you know, Oscar was at home the whole time. But they don't show you how he got his outfit his, you know, what he was dealing with while he was gone. They missed a big part into at least building on Oscar's character. Like, they really could have built Oscar's character in this episode. What confused me was how worried everyone was for Oscar. They, they don't know much about Oscar. And, you know, like, it's fine to worry about him, but, like, how worried they were, it was, it was more like they were worried because he has Ozpin in his head. Like, they don't know anything about Oscar aside from you know, he was just this kid who Ozpin is combined with. And I'm just, like, they just really could have just built on his character more. Um, an interesting thing is the mysterious red-headed girl who popped up at Pierce statue, who, in my personal opinion, I like her design a lot. Like, I like short hair, and the green eyes kind of got me. So, like, like you know, she kind of looks like Pira, but, like, I, I really like her winter outfit a lot. But, um, other than that, it was kind of weird how she popped up, but I liked it. It kind of set up a scene. But also, a lot of people speculate, like, who she is. Like, people say, oh, that's Pira's mom. Or, it's a uh, resurrected Pira. Or, like, that's the ghost of Pira. Or, I it could be her sister. Like, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that could happen here. But an interesting one was that, like, it was... It had to do with uh, Jean's aura. Because if you remember in, like, I think it was Volume 1, Episode 3. Jean's semblance was unlocked... Or not semblance. His aura was unlocked by Pira. And it was, uh, everyone's saying, like, maybe that's a piece of, like, Pira's aura talking to Jean or whatever. But how would she get the flowers? <laughs> like, we know she's alive. This is a living person. Though we don't know the full extent of aura. And it being a ghost, how would you get the flowers? I don't know. It it could be a lot of possibilities. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of things I feel like they missed in this episode. There's some things they, I think they did good with this episode. And there's just a lot of things they could have done better with this episode. So, yeah. Hope you guys uh, liked the video and... I'll probably do a review on the next one when it comes out for free. So, see ya.